Jackson's five month update. I feel like I just did his four month update. Maybe I just did. I think I did his a little bit late. So it really has only been like three or maybe two and a half weeks since I did it. I can't remember, but I feel like it was just yesterday. But anyways, he turned five months old yesterday for you guys. I think it was probably two days ago if this goes up on a Friday. Um, but what day was it? September 30th, he turned five months old. I cannot believe it. Um, a lot of stuff has happened this month, so I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly get started. If you see me looking down, it's because I have all of my notes on my phone. So I didn't even go over these notes before I'm doing this either, so sorry if they're all over the place, but we were just gonna go ahead and get started. So on September 1st, it was his first day of being four months old. We left him here with his Mimi and Papa when we went to Disney World, and that's the first time that we've left him with anybody. Um, of course, we, we trust Mimi and Papa. There was no big deal or anything, but that's definitely something to document, especially because we left him for the first time around the same exact time that we left Jane for the first time when we went to Hawaii. So it was just interesting with that comparison. He was a good boy and they really enjoyed being with him and it was very nice for us not to have to have him in Disney World with us because I'm sure it would have been even more chaotic than it really was. This month I've really noticed that he loves to watch Jane. He loves to watch her do anything. He'll follow her around the room. You know, Jane is always running around um, making a mess and everything and he just kind of watches her as she goes and he's like more fixated on her than anybody else so even if Chris walks by or the dogs he's just always wanting to know where Jane is he laughs at her all the time he looks at her even if um, she is only just talking to him he thinks it's so funny and he just really loves his big sister so I cannot wait to see them um, interact and play together more in the future. Also this month um, with noticing different things he's kind of just become aware of all of his surroundings and things Sorry, if you guys hear thunder, it's storming outside, which is also why my lighting is not very good either. So I hope that this video is going to turn out okay. Anyways, he's become a lot more observant of everything around him. He's watched TV. He's noticed the TV and kind of stares at it if it's like a lot of bright colors and stuff. He's noticed the dogs a few times. He likes to grab the dog's hair. All things where he, I can just tell that he's actually looking at something and making reactions to him, whether he's smiling or feeling something or laughing. Um, and it's just a lot of fun to see him start to learn and start to observe things. On September 23rd, so right before he turned five months, he rolled over for the first time from his back to his belly. And if you guys watch our daily vlogs, then you know that that was a really big deal for me because Jane, I think, rolled over a little bit before that. And although it's not a competition, um, I was really trying to get him to roll and then I totally missed it on camera. Being a daily vlogger, I really wanted to get that first roll on camera and I totally missed it. And not only did I miss the, it with the camera, I also missed it all together. I didn't even see it happen. I just know that he was on his back and then I looked back over and he was on his belly. Nobody in our family got to see it, but I know that he did it on September 23rd and I was really, really excited. It then took him a few more days to do it again. We kind of kept trying to coax him to do it again. But on September 27th, he rolled over again from his back to his belly and Chris got to see it that time. And that is when Chris also got it on camera for you guys in the daily vlog. Um, and then that same day, September 27th, he rolled over a few more times, um, like three or four times in a row, and I missed all of them, of course. And then the very next day, September 28th, I got to see him roll, and from then on, he's just been a rolling machine. He loves to roll from his back to his belly, and he has now rolled over one time from his belly to his back. And I believe that's usually what they do first, is from their belly to their back but Jackson did, hasn't done that yet except for that one time. I know that he was on his belly, I looked back over and he was on his back. So again, no one else has seen it yet, but I know that he's rolled from his belly to his back at least one time, and I think that was like September 29th. Jackson also had his first virus, I believe, this month. It's really hard to tell when your little kids are sick or what hurts or what's wrong. Um, I just started noticing that he wasn't eating enough, he wasn't eating his normal amounts, he wasn't interested in eating, and then a few days later, his poop totally changed. Um, it changed in color, it changed in texture. I talked about it a lot in my daily vlog, so I'm not gonna go into detail about everything. But I ended up taking him to the doctor, and they said that he must just have some little virus that just needs to pass, and just to keep watching him to make sure he doesn't get dehydrated. And a few days later, he was eating back to normal again, and then it did take a little while for his poop to be back to normal as well. 
um, but he is better now. He didn't seem to be very sick. He didn't act sick, which is good because there's nothing worse than a sick baby when you can't do anything. Um, but I know that he wasn't doing very well. So also, when Jackson is on his belly, he loves to reach for toys. He also does like Superman when he's when his arms are up and his legs are up and he's just hanging out on his belly. Um, and also, I've noticed this month that he can move to wherever he wants to be. He's not crawling or scooting um, or army crawling or anything like that. But if he's facing one way when he's on his belly, he knows how to move with his arms, his whole body to face another direction. I hope that makes sense. Um, but once he gets on his belly, I can keep looking over at him and he'll be facing all sorts of different ways, kind of looking at his toys and trying to reach for all the toys on the ground. He has started to show a little bit of separation anxiety, although I don't think it's just necessarily for me and it's definitely not all the time. But just for instance, um, if I'm hanging, that UPS guy just honked at me. This is, a, I'm doing this right in front of a window and our street is outside, so like when people walk by they can see like the camera, it's kind of awkward. Oh well. Anyways, he will, if we're standing right next to him, he'll be fine, and then as soon as we walk away out of his sight, he'll start to fuss and whine, and he knows that when he does that, we'll come back over. So, um, I don't think that's really separation anxiety at all, but it's definitely, he notices when we're gone, and he gets upset when we leave his sight. Jackson also tries to feed himself a lot. He knows how to grab his bottle and put his bottle into his mouth. He just doesn't know quite well how to tip it up so that the milk comes out and especially when the bottle is getting low. I don't like when he sucks a lot of air so usually we're still feeding him but he definitely when he's hungry and we're taking too long with that bottle he'll definitely grab the bottle and put it right into his mouth. It's really funny to watch and I think in no time he'll be holding it by himself. This is something really random but I wanted to document it because something that Jane did as well and it, since it is so random then both do it it's just very strange. Um, he sleeps with his lovey on his face, which kind of freaks me out a little bit with kids suffocating, but I think at his age right now, he knows to pull the lovey off of his face if he needs to, or a blanket or whatever. Um, and the lovey is really small. If you don't know what a lovey is, it's basically just a little stuffed animal, maybe about this big, and then the stuffed animal is holding a blanket that's maybe like that big. So it's just really small. There's no way that it can get like tangled and wrapped around him at all during when he's sleeping. So I feel safe with him having it, but he definitely puts it right on top of his face when he sleeps and that's exactly what Jane did when she was his age too. And now Jane is obsessed with her lovey still, so I think Jackson's gonna do the same. And Jackson actually goes to sleep now without me rocking him or anything. I could just put him in his crib stick that passy in and give him his lovey and he is already falling asleep. So I think since we're on a schedule, I know when he's ready for his naps in bedtime, it makes it a lot easier to not have to rock him to sleep or make him tired because he's already tired at that time. Jackson is beginning to drop his third nap. So right now his nap schedule is going down at 10 a.m. and he sleeps till around 11. Although he would sleep longer than that for that first nap, but I wake him up because I like him to have a long afternoon nap when Jane is napping. And when I wake him up from that nap, he's not cranky or anything like that. So it's not like I'm depriving him of sleep at all. So he usually just does that hour morning nap. And then in the afternoon when Jane goes down, he goes down as well. It's usually around 1.30 by the time they both go down. And then they both sleep till around four o'clock, which gives me a lot of time to make videos and do a lot of other work um, around the house. So that's about two and a half hour nap, which is really good for the afternoon. And then like I've mentioned a few times, he does still have a third nap. And that time can vary between like five and seven o'clock. But that nap is usually only, um, it used to be about 45 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. But the past week or so, it has only been like 15 minute nap. Um, but I can tell that he definitely still needs it because if he doesn't take that nap, he's really, really cranky. Nothing. He just wants to be held. He doesn't want to be put down. He wants somebody to be right there the whole entire time with him. You can't walk away or he'll start crying. So I can tell that he still needs that nap. So I usually just put him in the swing that we have here downstairs. I don't go through the whole um, nighttime or sleep routine at all. I don't swaddle him. Just put him in his swing. I let the swing go for a little bit, put a blanket on him. We don't get his lovey or anything like that. He will doze off for maybe 15 minutes these days. Then he's up and he's like a new baby. He's happy and ready to go until bedtime. So just the fact that that time is getting shorter and shorter and shorter, I know that sooner or later 
maybe in this month right now that we're in, he will be cutting that nap out altogether, which is fine with us. Jackson is a champ sleeper, and I know that I said that last month, but I'm just gonna repeat it again because he really is, and I'm definitely gonna knock on wood again because I don't wanna mess anything up, but he really does sleep good. He's good with his naps. If he ever wakes up, usually I just have to put his passy back in, and then he's back asleep or hand him his lovey again. Sometimes if he's lost his lovey, then I give him his lovey back. That can help him go to sleep. But at nighttime, usually we go to bed by 8.30 or nine, or I say we, but Jane and Jackson, 8.30 or nine o'clock. And most nights he will sleep the entire night until around 7.30 or eight when he wakes up. Some nights he still wakes up, and cries a little bit and will want his passy back. And then other nights, it seems like in the past few nights, he has woken up and he kind of just talks to himself in his crib. And before, I would definitely go up there and stick that passy back in for him to go to sleep. But the past few nights, I've waited it out to see if maybe he would fall back asleep on his own. It's kind of hard because I can't go to sleep when he's talking on the monitor, and I know that it might be keeping Chris up. Um, and sometimes it can go on for like 10 minutes. But I'm trying to teach him how to soothe himself back to sleep without that passy as well. So it's been working a lot. A lot of times he'll just wake up, talk to himself for a few minutes, and then roll back over and go to sleep. So he's a really good sleeper. He's doing really good, and I think he enjoys his sleep time. He had his first diaper rash this month as well, and I think that kind of went with um, his virus. It wasn't a bad rash at all. It was just one night, his bum was a little bit red. I put some diaper rash cream on there and the next day it was fixed. So whatever he was sitting in in that diaper from his virus probably made it just a little bit irritated. I make sure to take care of that right away and then he was better the next day. And the last thing is I do know how much he weighs because when he had his virus, we weighed him there and he weighs um, 15 pounds, uh, 15 pounds 14 ounces which is almost 16 pounds and he's about the same size as Jane was at this time so that's a lot of fun to compare um, I'm actually gonna put a comparison picture of Jane at five months and Jackson at five months up right now on the screen so you guys can see it I think it's really funny how similar they look and also just even the amount of hair they both have the same amount of hair at this age and they're about the same weight and height and everything so it's crazy how much different that your kids can be, each kid, and it's also crazy how similar they can be. So I think that's a lot of fun to compare and look at. That is it for Jackson's five month update. I hope I didn't forget anything and I hope this video isn't super long, but thanks so much for watching guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.